Hi, good afternoon to all of you. And uh, today I'm not going to speak about any particular brand in specific, uh, but uh, I'm going to speak about cats. Uh, okay, so um, afternoon uh, for me in my childhood has always been associated with those lazy cats in the alleys or in the corridors, uh, polishing of the fish bones or drinking of milk from the pots. You know, that's, that's a very common association of childhood when you spent time at home in the afternoon. So I'm not talking about the laziness of the cats, but today I'm going to talk about the role of cats in branding and communications. Okay, so moving forward, <coughs> cat calling. This is extremely derogatory term and an action. It's an action about infringing into the personal space of a person or you know, just threatening the sense of safety of a person around that. But perhaps this term came out from the fact that it's very hard to get the attention of the cats when you call them. It's as simple as that. You know, so how this little, little cultural context, they become a daily usable term in our lives. And we, as we move forward, we'll see how it affects our marketing uh, space. So I'm going to show you two pictures today, and I'm going to do you the talking. So you're going to tell me that what you feel seeing both the pictures. So any of you can just volunteer. So this is a picture of a dog, and there's a picture of a cat. Now, any of you, can you tell me what's the difference between these two pictures? Cat doesn't care, cat doesn't care obviously. <laughs> and anything else? Can't hear you, sorry. The dog is like, yeah, dog is like trying to give all the attention to the person. Anything else which comes to your mind? Actually, perfect. It's basically, you know, sometimes very hard to um, get the attention of a cat, and you have to work for the affection of the cat. While the dogs, basically, they're wagging their tails, and they're giving you all the attention, make you feel happy. So there's a reason I'm talking about it. Uh, to establish some of the personality traits of cats, uh, which basically help a brand, um, you know, get those values and use it in its advantage. So before I move on to the main portion of the presentation, I'd like to show you a video. This is from the movie Meet the Parents, and this is a conversation and dialogue between Robert De Niro and Ben Stiller. And in this movie, Robert De Niro incidentally owns a cat and he advocates in favor of cats. Okay, so let's see the video. It's been really incredible. Greg, how come you don't like cats? I think we need to increase the volume. I don't not like cats. I, I just I just prefer dogs. I mean, I'm just more of a dog kind of, you know, come home, they're you know, wagging their little tails, happy to see you, kind of. So you need that assurance, do you? You prefer an emotionally shallow animal? I... You see, Greg, when you yell at a dog, his tail will go between his legs and cover his genitals, his ears will go down. A dog is very easy to break. But cats make you work for their affection. They don't sell out the way dogs do. Huh. You like Peter Paul and Mary? Yeah, so this is awkward silence. I, I, obviously, it shows the dynamics between the father-in-law and the... Um, there would be. So um, moving forward, what I'd love to establish is that cats, they form a very instant connect. You know, they, they really kind of, uh, it's, it's been found through many studies and researches that cats, they really generate happy, positive, energetic feelings when you view cat ads. And uh, as we go digital, as the kind of communication and branding increases in the internet space, I think this is one particular aspect which is proven. You know, I think anything related to cats work very well. So I, today in the presentation, I'd like to show you some of those examples. And I'd like to show how basically things are being used across cultures. So moving forward, another thing which I want to establish here is cats have a very deep cultural connect. And they straddle across cultures. I'll give you an example of cats straddling across cultures in Southeast Asia, Japan, China, Western world, you know, so it basically straddles across culture. So maybe the communication 
or the spends in communication becomes much lesser when you, you act upon one idea on CAT across different countries. Okay, so, so I will focus on three areas. One is how basically CATs are impacting brand and value propositions culturally. Then I'll give you one example of CATs basically being used for effective brand repositioning where the brand really failed and it basically got resurrected when we used CATs. And the third one, obviously CATs have a very tremendous value of going viral and basically um, using the cross media platform. So anything basically shown in the mass media can go very viral at a digital level. So the cultural impact of CATs here. Now uh, I'm, pretty uh, I'm pretty much sure that a lot of people have seen this symbol across the stores in Japan, China, Singapore, and this is called Maneki Meko, basically. Maneki Meko, simply putting, is a translation of basically called a good luck or a good fortune cat. This is a fable. It started in Japan. It was a landlord who was basically standing at one area, and there was a cat who was making this gesture towards the landlord. And he was very curious, and he just moved to the cat, and the lightning thunder struck at that place where he was standing previously. So it was basically seen as a gesture of saving the landlord. And from there, this whole perception of good luck or saving came into significance. And this particular small incident you know, spread across countries, and it became a fable. So I will today show that how Maneki Meko as basically a concept an idea has straddled across countries, and I'd just like to play a video here. So if you see Japan, China, Singapore, they have different colorful renditions of the same cat, but it's used across cultures to, you know, use in social settings, happy ceremonies, So moving forward, obviously, you know, one positive association is about good luck from this particular symbol of cat. And the other one, if you see the symbol, this is a Chinese symbol of prosperity. So it basically brings about good luck, prosperity, which can be laddered down effectively to associations of cheerfulness, happiness, warmth, you know, so many other things which can be brought from the warmth of a cat. So we'll see how this particular proposition is being used for branding. So uh, I was writing this article, and I found out this particular brand, which is there in Singapore also now. It is essentially a Japanese brand of karaoke, and it's a family karaoke joint. And it has effectively used this particular branding of Maneki Meko to extend across cultures beyond Japan. Today we have several karaoke uh, parlors, uh, basically in Singapore, in Malaysia, in Indonesia. They are extending to Thailand just by, exp just by extending this particular idea and concept of Maneki Meko. So essentially, you know, if you look at this uh, video, this is the internal communication, what they do inside the karaoke. So essentially, this is about creating this happy, that uh, very, very warm, kids-friendly image, and at the same time, extremely affable, uh, instant connect with everybody, all the parents and kids. That's how they're using it for the brand. Now, moving forward, I've finished my cultural connect aspect of cats. Now I'm moving on to the other aspect, which is about how the cats help the brand reposition itself from utter distress to becoming a success. Here, I'm going to talk about a brand which is called GoDaddy.com. Don't go by its name and literal meaning. It's basically a brand which is a web hosting company. It's also into forming domains. And it also helps all the startups build their websites very quickly. They have templates. So it's a very self-empowering kind of brand. So when the first launch, today I'm going to talk about this particular GoDaddy brand, which helped this brand, Gato Chapio, to basically come in life. So Gato basically is 
a hat uh, cat in Fra cat in Spanish and chapo basically is a hat in French. So basically it's hats for cats. I will speak about it. But before that, we will show you where GoDaddy went wrong with this communication. So just watch this particular advertisement. Do you have any idea how fast you were? Hey, I know you. Yeah. You're that GoDaddy girl. I love GoDaddy.com domain names, websites, hosting. <laughs> I know. Can't believe it, right? All for less than one dollar a month. Affirmative. You know, I've always wanted to be a GoDaddy. Well, you seem to have what it takes, ma'am. I definitely have what it takes. Uh huh. Yes, you do. Hello, music. Go, Daddy. Go, Daddy. Go, Daddy. Does your neck hurt from that? Go, Daddy. Not on the glass. Daddy girl, but I'm still writing you a speeding ticket. Huh? I take my job very seriously. Okay. Have a good day. Okay, so um, the reason I, uh, you know, kind of showed this art to you, this was basically a very famous auto racing driver in U.S. called Danica Patrick, and they showed her in various states of undress. And, um, you know, th and the CEO of campaigns, which basically includes stripteases and body paints, etc., it didn't work for the brand, unfortunately. And it w basically got into a lot of controversy. There's some, you know, collective business owners, female business owners who got against the company. Uh, and it, uh, it kind of forced some companies to do business with GoDaddy. You know, so in the era of digital world, we need to be very careful as to what kind of communication we are showing because it goes viral and everybody watches it, you know, and sometimes sex doesn't sell. So what did GoDaddy do? <laughs> you know, so essentially, uh, you know, so it ran under a fire, you know, and it definitely was under immense pressure to increase its corporate image and how it did it. I'm Johanna, and I make hats for cats, fedoras, beanies, bowlers, fezzes, bonnets, all kinds of hats for all kinds of cats. And why would a cat need a helmet? Hello. Eight lives down, one to go. I start by trying to tap into the feline mystique. I help a cat express his or her personality. The right style of hat can have a very positive impact on a cat's self-esteem. I studied at an Universidad in Barcelona and also the Sorbonne. And do you think your education has helped you run your business? Not really. No. Years ago, I was starring in a one-woman show about a cat who is allergic to other cats. <laughs> Opening slash closing night, it hit me. Hats for cats. Everyone said I was crazy. Everyone. But I just kept with it. Things really took off when I went online. I got my domain, gatochapeau.com from GoDaddy. How did you choose that name? Oh, well, um, Gato is Spanish for cat, and Chapeau is French for hat. 
dot com. That's that comes with it. Now these things are feline out of here. Do you miss the theater? The American theater is dead. Essentially, I think they showed a woman uh, who is a failure. At the same time, they showed, you know, the whole campaign was, the theme was against all odds fate. Uh, when you basically, your wall is, you know, yourself behind the wall, you can't do anything much, you know, you have to do something about your life. And essentially, that was the proposition uh, to communicate uh, to the startups. You know, a lot of startups, they want to do their own. So I think this, this particular advertising frame and tone of communication worked very well with the audience. And this run a slew of campaigns around that. So essentially, uh, you know, if you look at the business impact which GoDaddy got, uh, definitely the share prices rose. And at the same time, I think it did, was not concentrated to the Western world. You know, it kind of really extended to the Asian market. And it has kind of got a 14 million plus paying customers now. Okay, so moving forward, the third leg, you know, I've talked about the cultural connect, I've talked about how basically it can be used for repositioning, but why do you think it's so effective as a tool for marketing? So I'd just like to ask you guys again, you can see this particular uh, perfect sad. Okay, so it's so easy to make out, you know, from a cat's expression that what kind of emotions is portraying, and it has a range. So moving forward, if I have to ask you this, Yes, and then if I have to ask you this, actually sleepy is happy, so I would say happy, and then very evil, bad, badass, and then you have the stud basically, right? So it has a range of emotions which it can project basically and projects human emotions onto a brand. So that's why it works so well across communications. So uh, basically it can project bipolar emotions. You know, that's how it works basically as a proposition. Now I would like to show your video also, but before that I'd like to talk about this particular cat. It's called the grumpy cat. Uh, can it, I'll just show the slide once. And it's basically a deformity the cat is suffering from. It's, it's a dwarfism the cat is suffering from. But the, that, that's why it gives a particular expression on the face of the cat. But this cat has been effectively used for brands like Friskies and you know, drinks brands. And it has gone very, very viral in the US. So I'd just like to show one video here on emotions, how the cat's emotions can be used. <laughs> I think the whole idea of basically showing this ad was to basically show the conflict of personalities between the two species and they have showed that very effectively in the advertising. Now moving forward, I think you know we can just list down you know the impact of TARD in building the brand Friskies, you know, it kind of became very successful and it went to you know, kind of, it become a celebrity cat, you know, if you can see. It was in the talk shows, it was given the, you know, favorite hotel rooms across the countries. So it really worked for the brand. Now, 
moving forward, you know, having seen all this, one thing is very clear that cats can have the ability to connect different media and go you know, cross media. So I would like to leave you guys with one advertising from Singapore, from a very own Singapore on the Singapore Tourism Board, where they have used the cats very effectively to go beyond the stereotypes of Marina Bay Sands or, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, gardens by the way, uh, because uh, tourism board, they wanted to establish that Singapore is much beyond, and it has its local areas, you know, and they have used the cats very effectively for that, yeah. In every cat's life in Singapore, there are a few defining moments. This is mine. The audition to be the cat of the trendiest neighborhood in Singapore. Diong Baru. This is my shot at being one of the legendary cats you see around town. Like Smokey, a dapper dude, he keeps it old school. Or Bella, she's the new kid on the block, the trending topic. Or Fufu, she's the class you want from that part of town. Oh, and my personal favorite, Lucky. Check out those whiskers. Oh yes, everyone's coming to this audition. Even Manja, the expert of acting coy and cute. And Abing, the neighborhood hustler. It is a big day, and we are all gunning for the same spot. Check out the competition. Everyone's present. And by everyone, I do mean the top talents in town. That one's Muma. They call him the Ball Whisperer. David Catas, the party boy. Leonardo DiCaprio, always coming close, just not close enough. And the one and only Kitty Furry. She's fireworks. Tony Paws is there too. Snoop Cat, or Lion, or Dog, or whatever. And then there's Tabby Lee, the one to watch. I mean, how does he even hold those sticks? Okay, my turn. Not bad, eh? Yay, I won. Take that, Tabby Lee. So this is what winning feels like. Meeting new fans, hanging out in the hood, you know, the next time you see me, or one of my famous friends in Singapore, say hi, and maybe take a picture with us. Ah, life is perfect. What happened was that after this ad was kind of launched, it became instantly shareable, extremely viral across this relevant audience. It straddled across Singapore and beyond Singapore, basically, and it kind of really connected very well. So, leaving you with the thought that we are all very familiar with the memes, cat memes around that, you know, it basically projects certain kind of emotions which we can use. Uh, give you an example of cheeseburger.com in the US, which has raised around $32 million and has around four million users right now, you know, so that's the power of the cats basically in the marketing world. And maybe I can just leave you guys with the thought that you can use the felines in your strategy. And just not that, you know, when we basically have this life, we have very simple moments and simple things going around us. And sometimes we are kind of uh, having a myopia of running some methods and doing things in a template. But maybe we can just see what are the things happening around us and borrow from them and just use it in a very simple way to communicate. So thank you. Thanks a ton.